Wow. Kind of acting up, ain't you, mister? Yeah. Got ignition trouble, I guess. Well, we'll take a look. Hmm. Say, how are your plugs? Oh, they're okay. I put in a whole new set a little while ago. Yeah, but uh, did you install plugs with the right heat range? I'm afraid I don't get you. Let me show you something, mister. Here. Tells you all about it in this little book. It says the right spark plug in the right place. Ignition engineered. What's that? It tells you right here on the first page. It says, this spark plug is designed to work in harmony with the rest of the ignition system. You see, the spark plug is like a link in a chain. I see. And, of course, the chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Right. So, assuming that the rest of the system is working okay, an ignition-engineered plug will help get the best out of your engine. That sounds logical. Sure. Now, uh, look at the way this plug is built. Take the insulator, for instance. Made of a fine grade of ceramic that'll withstand extreme temperatures and pressures under all kinds of operating conditions. I see. And the shell is made of a special grade of steel. It's designed to hold a gas-tight seal with the insulator. Welded onto the shell is the side electrode. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the terminal on top, isn't it? That's right. It holds the high-tension wire from the distributor. What's the plug look like inside? Well, here's a cross-section. The center electrode extends down from the terminal through the insulator into the combustion chamber. Mm -hmm. You see, the electrode is screwed into the insulator. Yeah. And sealed in place with a special cement to prevent compression leakage. Mm -hmm. Now, this center electrode, along with the side electrode, form the spark gap. I get it, yeah. Now, the design of these two electrodes is called gap geometry. Whoa, wh wh wait a minute, what's that? What's gap geometry? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, you notice the design of the side electrode against the blunt center electrode? That's important, huh? Oh, it sure is. Suppose both electrodes were pointed, like these. They require a relatively low voltage, but wear and erode rapidly. But why couldn't the electrodes be round, like these? Well, that wouldn't work as well for this purpose. Round electrodes wear less rapidly, but they require higher voltage than pointed electrodes for the same gap conditions. And why is this special design any better? Because this electrode design combines certain desirable features of pointed, rounded, and flat electrode types. And that's what we call gap geometry. Well, I certainly learned something there. Now, uh, what's on this next page? Oh, that's the heat range I mentioned. Oh, yeah. You see, spark plugs are manufactured in several heat ranges, from extreme cold to extreme hot. And within these ranges are medium, medium hot, and medium cold. Well, what's the difference between the hot and cold plug? Oh, the difference is in the size of the insulator nose and its relationship to the shell space. The hot plug has a longer nose, holds heat longer, and so it takes longer for the heat to be dissipated. Mm-hmm. I see, yeah. The cold plug has a shorter nose and dissipates the heat more rapidly. The idea is to choose plugs with the right heat range for your engine. One that'll fire the right spark at the right time. Hey, wait a minute. How is the spark made in the first place? Well, it shows you in this diagram. Now, A is the battery. B is the primary winding. And C is the secondary winding. Both windings are inside the coil. I get it. D is the condenser, and E represents the distributor breaker points. Mm -hmm. F is the spark gap. The system has a common ground in the car frame. Now, let's watch this setup work in slow motion. We can see just how the spark is produced. When the distributor breaker points close, current starts flowing in the primary winding. This sets up a magnetic field, which in turn links the primary and the secondary winding. When the breaker points open, current stops flowing in the primary circuit, and the magnetic field collapses. A voltage is developed in the secondary winding, charging the secondary system, 
until the charging voltage reaches such value that it jumps the spark plug gap. Mm-hmm. Kind of technical, isn't it? <laughs> well, there's a simpler way of explaining it. Here. Oh, yes. Uh, hey, what kind of a blueprint is this? This is an ultra-modern car with a sure-fire ignition system. The powerful motor A idles quietly on chassis B. The driver, C, decides the motor needs a little spark and comes up with the answer. There ain't no priorities on Tomcats. Here the cat, primary, parts the dog, secondary, who explodes and combustion takes place. <laughs> Now, uh, what's on this next page? Well, that's important. <laughs> Who is this little fella? Well, he's Johnny Plug Check. Checks the operation of your spark plugs. Johnny Plug Check? Checks plugs? Sure. <laughs> that's me, all right. Uh-oh. Look at those plugs. What am I waiting for? Oh! Hey, who's been using an end wrench on spark plugs? Not me, Johnny. I just laid it there. I use a socket wrench. Well, I should hope so. You've got to have the right kind of tools to do... Oh! Hey! Hey! Give me a minute! <laughs> Don't you all know you're supposed to keep it clean? Around these spark plug holes? Oh, go easy, Johnny. I just started the job. Hey, that plug's cracked. And how... And how about this one? You sure it's the right beat range, mister? Gosh, I don't know, Johnny. I didn't pick out the plugs. But don't you know the beat range is important? <laughs> Well... Never mind. <laughs> I'll give you the straight dope. When your car was built, the manufacturer specified the correct spark plugs. But many engines on the road today have seen a lot of service since then. A change of plugs to a different heat range will often improve the engine performance. We'll look at some used plugs. Come on this way, fellas. Now this is a cold plug taken from an engine that should have used a hotter plug. You see the sludgy deposits? Oil glistening on the plug? All bad. Turn the page, Mac, and show them how it happened. Okay. Here's a diagram of a four-cycle engine. Now we'll watch it work in slow motion. All right. Now, the piston on the intake stroke sucks in the gas. Then follows the compression stroke. Later, the firing stroke. And finally, the exhaust stroke. Now, watch what happens as this cold plug tries to operate at low temperatures. Carbon, formed by particles of oil, is deposited on the insulator. The carbon gradually builds up on the insulator until the plug no longer fires proper. Hey, I get it. The hotter plug would burn off the carbon before the plug had a chance to short. That's right. Now, over here, now this hot plug was taken from a hot engine. You see the burned and fused electrodes and the blistered insulator nose? Well, either of these conditions could cause pre-ignition, mister. What's pre-ignition, Johnny? It's your turn, Mac. Explain it to him. Okay, Johnny, we'll check with the book. Now, in normal ignition, combustion takes place when the piston is near the top of the compression stroke. But in pre-ignition, the combustion will occur before this time. When the piston is here, Or it can happen when it's here. You mean the spark plug ignites the gases too soon? Mm, no, that's not quite it. You see, the ignition spark is always timed to take place near the top of the compression stroke. But what causes early combustion to take place? An overheated firing tip. It gets so hot that combustion occurs before the actual ignition spark takes place. And the hotter the plug tip gets, the earlier combustion occurs until Finally, popping back through the carburetor results. Then what can be done? If spark plugs are responsible for this condition, a colder spark plug is your answer. Oh, well, yes, I see. What do you say we look at some normal plugs? If the heat range is right for your engine, this is how they look. But how can I tell when a spark plug is normal? Ah, by checking the color of the insulator nose. The color should be brown. And it should match the color of any of these three plugs. Now, this little gadget is a plug check indicator. If one's available, you'd better use it. Then, by checking the nose color of my plugs against the plugs on this card, 
I can find out if I'm using the right heat range, right? Right. And for more detailed information, just refer to this data book. But suppose my plugs are the wrong heat range. What do I do? Just turn the indicator over. And on the back, you'll find a spark plug heat range chart. Oh, oh pardon me. There. Now, listed across the top are the various thread sizes. And, uh... Down the side is a heat range scale showing the different insulator noses, you see? Oh, right there, sure. Starting with the hottest plug, the noses and shell spaces change progressively as you go down the scale to the coldest plug. Within this range, there's a correct plug for every engine. Oh, it sounds great. With that little book, it looks like my motor worries are over. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Don't get me wrong, mister. The data book is only for spark plug trouble. Many other things can and do go wrong with an engine. You said it, Mac. Now take this sound, for instance. Listen. Say, I've heard that noise before. Sure, that thing. Or not. Technically known as detonation. Low-grade fuels burn more rapidly than leaded or higher grades. And the use of low-octane gasoline causes a higher pressure and temperature to be developed in the combustion chamber, which ignites by compression the unburned charge so rapidly that it delivers a hammer blow to the piston and walls, producing knock or ping. And here's another condition, mister. That's caused not by spark plugs, but by loose piston rings and worn cylinders. See? There's too much clearance. The rings are worn from here to here, and that's enough to let oil leak into the combustion chamber. Carbon forms behind the rings. Result? You use a lot of oil, and you foul your spark plugs. Now, the spark gap is... And here's something else you can't blame on your plugs. The sticky valve. See how the valve is stuck open from the seat? Yeah. On the firing stroke, Part of the hot gases will leak past the valve and cause it to burn. I see. On the exhaust stroke, the valve will open all right, but when it tries to close, the valve sticks again. Your engine heats up, and you're in for some costly repair bills. Hey, fellas, now this spark gap is very... That's right, Johnny. And this is important, mister. You mean the spark gap? You said it. And regap it according to your car manufacturer's specifications. Old plug or new plug? Check this area. What's that gadget you've got, Johnny? It's a spark plug gap gauge. The book tells you all about it. This gauge is made up of feeler gauges, an adjusting wrench, and a magnifying glass. Well, how do I use that? First, you refer to your manual or to the back of your plug check indicator for gap specifications. Now, let's suppose .025 is specified for your car. I see. And that reading will correspond to a particular feeler gauge. Is that right? Right. And now the correct gauge is inserted between the electrodes. Of course, the gap can be too wide or too close. When you adjust it, be sure to use the adjusting wrench on the side electrode. Then carefully either way for correction. And avoid touching the center electrode. When the gap is properly adjusted, the gauge should just fit. Now in the case of an old plug, the electrodes may be worn. Like this. So it's important to use a round feeler gauge in checking the gap, because it'll give you the true distance between the electrodes. It's important that spark plugs should be checked, cleaned, and regapped every 4,000 miles or every six months. Now to clean, you place the plug in the cleaner, turn with your right hand, and press down on this lever to maintain the correct air pressure. Be sure to clean the upper part of the plug. Say, that plug ought to be clean now. Not yet. Got to blow it out. Now, regardless of whether you're installing a new plug or an old plug, this is the way you do it. First, you clean the seat. <laughs> that seat. Now, clean the seat. And always use a new gasket. Screw the plug in by hand until you feel it come in contact with the gasket. Remember the socket wrench and use it. And be sure it fits snugly. Turn until you feel the plug compress the gasket, then stop. 
Don't over tighten. You see, mister, when you compress the gasket, it actually becomes a heat conductor and completes the flow of heat to the water jack. Now, if the gasket isn't properly compressed, your plug is liable to overheat. And now, so you won't forget, let's check the five important points that help you get the best out of your engine. One, check heat range. Two, compare insulator color. Three, clean spark plug. Four, check gap setting. Five, install with new gaskets. And now you're all set. Okay, turn her over. Okay. She sounds plenty smooth now. Now remember, if you need me, uh, look me up. Okay, Johnny. Boy, the right spark plug properly installed sure does make a difference. So long, Mac. And thanks. So long, mister. <laughs>